Finally, we've had, we're seeing that the FinSAC report has been released that Dr. Nigel Clark, the economic wizard of Jamaica, has decided to release the FinSAC report, a report that has been delayed for so many years now. I think the report was published, not published, but was finished, was compiled and written in 2018, if my memory serves, serves me correctly. So finally, Dr. Nigel Clark has decided to release that report. But the question is, why now? No, why now? Because Dr. Nigel Clark is on his way to Washington, D.C. We don't know if there's anything damning in the report that would have implicated him. Well, he was, I don't think he was responsible. I don't think, don't think he was involved in the FinSAC debacle that happened. But was he trying to also hush the stories, cover up stories, cover up information that should have been released after the writing, after the compilation of the report, the FinSAC report. I'm not sure, but it's very strange that Dr. Nigel Clark is now releasing the FinSAC report. And the Gleaner, not the Gleaner, but the Observer this morning in the title suggesting finally, finally, FinSAC commission hearings made public. Well, what is this thing about being made public? Now, we should have been hearing us getting a series of report from the the Gleaner and Observer from 2018, because the, the 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 report was written. We understand. I think everything was written from 2018. Why wasn't the Gleaner? Why wasn't the Observer making information? You know, researching, doing their investigations, and reporting to the Jamaican public about some of the blunders made by the Patterson's Land Administration. Now, the observer here is suggesting the public hearings of the Financial Sector Adjustment Company FinSAC Commission established in 2009 to investigate the factors that led to Jamaica's financial sector collapse in the 1990s have been made available in a public archive. So this is a public archive. I'm not sure if everybody will be able to access it. I'm sure, well, when we say public, what do we mean? Just publicly um, available to the universities, to the academic centers, and to intellectuals, we don't know yet. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, following through on a promise made earlier this year, announced the launch, emphasizing that his personal conviction motivated the decision to make the submissions accessible in lieu of a final report that was never done. The commissioner has resigned. There is no commission. The hearings are finished. And I certainly did not think it would be appropriate for that jump drive to end up in the waste bin or for it to end up in file number 13, said Clark during the launch event at Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston on Thursday. And this is all, what always happens. And, you know, whether we like Dr. Nader Clark or not, we have to give him credit for publish, publishing this report, right, or for making this report available to the public because we always do these things where we spend huge amount of money millions of dollars comp you know compiling reports and they just go into the dustbin they just go into the dustbin of history nothing happens and no one is held accountable right and having had taxpayers invested in so much money in these reports, in these investigations. Now, the commission spanned a decade from its establishment on January 12, 2009 to 2019. So it was 2019 that perhaps they were finished, though it was disbanded from 2012 to 2016. So, you know, whatever. And cost over 160 million Jamaican dollars, right? The FinSAC report, which nothing will come out of this report. Nothing will really come out of this report. It's for the University of the West Indies and the University of Technology to grandstand and to act as if they're intellectuals and they're going to be there and talking all sorts of nonsense. Nothing really is going to come out of this report because that is how our intellectuals behave or pseudo-intellectuals behave in Jamaica. Nothing is really deeply investigated. And we're not going to get an on you know an, an, a nonpartisan objective understanding of what took place during these critical years 
of Jamaica's development because this really has set our development backward. And I don't think we're ever going to move forward. Those were critical years that we should have developed that all people in the Caribbean, all the economies that we're seeing growing now, whether it's the Dominican Republic economy or, uh, or Trinidadian economy, whatever economy that is growing or what was, was growing in the Caribbean region, they started their development goals in the 1990s. And Jamaica had stunted growth because of this huge watch that scandal that took place there. A year before it was permanently disbanded, the cabinet had lost confidence in the commission's ability to produce a report despite its initial efforts. So when you disband a committee such as the FinSAC com committee, do we require, should taxpayers get back their money from these guys who were not qualified, who did not really meet the objectives of the committee? Should the government request that they reimburse the country with the huge amounts of money that was paid over to them? I am sure not. I am sure that the government, the taxpayers of Jamaica, have not been reimbursed. These guys have just gotten their, their bank accounts more fattened, right? And that is what happens. There's nothing that's going to come out of these things. And these people just set up committees so that money can monies can be paid and no one is held accountable. Within the archives, there are two or three chapters of an initial report. However, the cabinet having provided funds and additional resources over time based on promises of the report felt that there was too much exposure in continuing to allocate resources without receiving a final report. So we don't know what's going on there. Right. Despite facing challenges that led to its discontinuation, the information collected was handed over to the ministry in 2019. When the information provided to the finance ministry, Clark expressed a sense of responsibility, saying he believes that everyone has a responsibility to water their own garden, meaning that individuals must manage their responsibilities well with the information they have. Clark explained that the decision to release this information publicly began two years ago after exploring the best way to make it accessible. So that's interesting. Before the collapse of the financial sector, Jamaica's debt to GDP ratio was in the below 70s. So it was below the 70s, which surged to over 115% by 2002. So before the this FinSAC debacle, Jamaica's debt to GDP ratio was in the low 70s. Think about that. And after that debacle, our debt soared from, to over 115% of GDP by 2002. By 2002. And I've always asked the question, this very critical question, all of this debt that Jamaica has to reduce, who do you think benefited from the debt? The financial elites and the and the politicians, they are the ones who backed up the debt. Jamaicans have gotten nothing from this huge debt because, and they're living wonderful, comfortable lives while the majority of Jamaicans are suffering. And yesterday I heard the prime minister talking about the brand Jamaica and the importance of building brand Jamaica. Because when we go to the world, people often have, you know, um, false information or misunderstandings about Jamaica. But what misunderstandings? It's a poor country, a poor, undeveloped country. That is what it is. And when people land there, that is what they see, right? That is what they see. But Mr. Mr. Gold, Mr. Holness, now that he's living in a castle, he's living in his mansion in Beverly Hills, right? He wants to project this image of brand Jamaica. That Jamaica is a, Jamaica is a country of prosperity. And according to him, we only have 4.2% unemployment rate. So what a country of wonderful things are happening under the Holness Land Administration. Right? Wonderful things are happening, are transpiring, and we ought to be grateful. And people, the world need to see that we lick up with Taiwan. That is the sort of delusion that wholeness would like to project on the international stage, right? That is what he is trying to project, this brand Jamaica that really is 
a country of great literacy. And, you know, you just look at what the comments that come from my videos and you see that people don't even understand what's going on. They do not understand. And it's not even much better for those who are university educated. It's not much better. The commentary coming out of Jamaica, you really wonder if they're living in a world unto themselves and they're not enmeshed in an international global economy. You can't have a discussion about the IMF with Jamaicans because they lack the requisite understanding and knowledge. Right? They prefer to go and talk all bunch of nonsense and the country remains undeveloped. Now, this is what Clark is, however, Clark emphasized that in disclosing the material, the ministry has taken care to comply with current legislative requirements. They always pretend as if they are legal and everything has to go through the legal realm and the legal bureaucracy, because that's what it is. They are bureaucrats. And the more bureaucracy, the more corruption and the more monies have to be given and the more pockets have to be filled. And these who are, whose buckets are being filled, not the people of Jamaica, right? The economic and political oligarchs. They are the ones who are receiving the, the huge amount of money and they're being fattened, right? They're being fattened while Jamaicans are being impoverished. And foreigners are going down there every day and they're looking at the desperation, the poverty that they see in Jamaica, right? They are astounded. Now, the gleaner here this morning is reporting something that, you know, Dr. What's his name again? Um, Omar Davis, he cannot get out of the news. So the, the gleaner reported this morning about the same FinSAC report, because, you know, Dr. Omar Davis is a very arrogant man and he is not apologetic about what took place. He's quite fine. He and his family are quite fine. So he is not apologetic to the Jamaican people about the disastrous policies surrounding the Finsac debacle. He doesn't care, right? He doesn't care. So the Gleaner has costly decisions, right? And of course, I'm sure the Gleaner, which is also an organ of the PNP, they won't like to hear that, but I am going to say that because it is the truth and the truth is the truth, right? While the Observer is an organ of the GLP, right? It's a voice box for the GLP. Now, the Pakistan administration ignored, this is what the Greener is reporting, advice from the international financial institutions on how to deal with the collapse of Jamaica's financial sector in the 1990s because it would be costly, former finance minister Dr. Omar Davis admitted. So why now? Why is he now telling us that the Jamaican government had to ignore recommendations coming from these international financial sector, from the international financial sector? which we know are corrupt anyway. Anything coming out of the United States is corrupt. And they're coming from Wall Street and from these multilateral organizations. That information is going to be corrupt. Davis made the conclusion in November 19, 2009, written at submission to the Commission of Inquiry, responding to more than 40 questions on the government's handling of the crisis. And we're just hearing this. Yeah? We're just hearing this from the Gleaner. The submission was among dozens of documents released by the Ministry of the Finance on Thursday as part of the FinSAC Commission archives. Remember now that they have finally um, decided to make public the report on FinSAC, on the FinSAC tobacco that took place in the 1990s. You know, one of the things that is going to happen, and I think this is something that is crucial for us to understand, to comprehend, is that the government is very deliberate when they're doing things. They're very strategic. And I say that to say that this thing happened in the 1990s. I'm in my 40s. Many young people do not care about this anymore. They have dragged this thing out. They have lengthened the time and people have lost interest. Even though they should be as interested as if we were still going through the 1990s, where we were still living in the decade of the 1990s, but they're no longer interested. So they know. They know that the majority of Jamaicans, particularly those who are young, most of the victims perhaps have died or sick, and they're not going to, you know, put any sort of you know, emphasis on what happened. This historical 
this very important historical moment in Jamaica. Davis said the government of the day sought advice from the International Monetary Fund. <laughs> Dr. Davis here is telling us that he sought advice from the International Monetary Fund, that, or, you know, the fund that to which uh, the economic wizard, Dr. Nigel Clark, is now on his way to assuming one of the deputy managing directors. Right. So he sought advice from this evil institution, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank. All of these institutions are part of the American military enterprise, the military industrial complex. Right. And they are not going to give you any good advice. We can see what we are going through. And I have been talking about the IMF yesterday. I talked about it. You are not listening to what is happening because you are more concerned about Vibes Cartel and the next concert, you are going to ignore these things to your own peril, right? He said the discussions took place in both Kingston and Washington and dragged on for several months. Yes, because that's what they want to do. And the IMF is no better, worse than the Jamaican institutions and also the Jamaican government. More corrupt, more nefarious, right? And certainly, and certainly, more deliberate than our current crop of politicians and Jamaican institutions. They are. Now, the summary of the advice, which was eventually received, was that intervention would be costly and would impact for an extended period on the fiscal accounts, said Davis. Right? So the, it would have been better to just allow the thing to collapse. It, it said that the same report said the Patterson administration decided that was not politically possible. The commission said the eventual cost was 40% of GDP. So here we're seeing that they have spent huge amount of money, right? To do this report and really nothing is going to become out of it, right? We see Nigel Clark is heading to the International Monetary Fund the International Monetary Fund, um, you know, imposed a very austere policy economic agreement upon Jamaica, right? And Jamaicans are suffering at this juncture of the history. And when we say tata to the IMF in 1995, according to P.J. Patterson, I knew from then that there was some behind the scenes agreement within that International Monetary Fund they would get their huge portions of money and bye-bye to them. Now, this is very interesting because we have to be able to be a little bit more perceptive, a little bit more, what should I say now, curious about what is happening in that country. Now, there's another article that is the, the Gleaner is carrying. Former finance minister critiqued Finsang, uh, critiqued FinSAC victim narrative. Well, this is Omar Davis speaking, this man with this heartless, right? This heartless, uncouth person, right? Former finance minister, Dr. Omar Davis said, it's a travesty, according to him, that several owners and senior managers who egregiously mismanaged the funds of investors and savers during the 1990s financial meltdown are seeking to portray themselves as FinSAC victims. So he's suggesting that the people here who are suffering are saying that they're FinSAC victims. But, you know, they should not be FinSAC victims because he, this another economic wizard, Dr. Omar Davis, did the best that he could. And he is unapologetic about the decisions, the disastrous, the catastrophic decisions that he actually made. There has been an avalanche of criticism from several quarters and blame heaped on the then P.J. Patterson administration for the major crisis that unfolded in the financial sector, which ultimately led to many persons, including pensioners and business persons, losing significant portions of their investment. Right? Many, including Dr. Carl Blythe, a then senior cabinet minister, said a high interest rate policy led to financial sector debacle, right? So this is what 
has happened. And I think the release of this FinSec report is very political. The timing is extremely political. The Integrity Commission is playing a game with Jamaicans. They're also being political, even though they don't like to hear that. And the government is doing its thing by being political, by releasing this FinSec report. And those who are on the PNP side, they will be happy for what the Integrity Commission has released. And I'm not suggesting that we should not have non-partisan objective understanding analysis, investigation of what is in the Integrity Commission report or what is in the FinSAC report. What I'm suggesting, when our politicians are playing politics with these very important information to the Jamaican people, then you are not going to win. The politicians are the ones and the financial elites who are the winners. This report is by no stretch of the imagination objective. It is not to help you. It is not to empower Jamaica. It is not to engage the populace. It's more to empower the political and economic elites. And that is why we see um, Nigel Clark finally releasing the document, right? Because there's some now, you know, milk that is spilled on the PNP that will affect the image of the PNP in terms of what people might decide if the, the population will vote or not vote for the PNP. The Integrity Commission's report on the Prime Minister's alleged illicit gains um, also will affect the image of the GLP. And they're playing this huge political battle, this huge political warfare. And Jamaicans are the ones who will lose in the final analysis. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like and you'll share. Remember now that you have to like the videos for the videos to be shared and to be sent on the platform. YouTube is trying to suppress the videos. They're not trying to promote the videos. So you have to like them so that the algorithms will be forced to share the videos with as many people as possible. Thank you so much for joining. All the best to you. See you then.